We are super excited today to welcome Tess Ann Chin, <laughs> winner of The Voice, season five, winner of The Voice, season I five. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> to Reality Check Headquarters. So you get to the battle rounds and Adam pairs you against Donna oh Allen. God. Nice knowing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's been real. Peace out. <laughs> I mean, it was an amazing battle round. You responded uh, very emotionally to it. I have to give thanks to Donna because to be able to sing next to somebody with that amazing voice, she made me a better singer. It was so intimidating singing with Miss Donna because Miss Donna don't need no mic. <laughs> <laughs> right? She just sing and it's like a glory of God filled the room. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to sing my part. You know what is amazing about her? She'd be the one going, come on, Tess. You know, let me let me let me feel you on this part or, or give me some more on this one. I was just like, wow. And I really we clicked because we we're also roommates, you know, and she has Jamaican roots, so we kinda we hit it off right away. And it was a scary thing for both of us because that song would not have been our first choice to mm -hmm. pick because we're rock and rollers. We love people like Tina Turner and Shaka Khan and all these people. And he, I love Emily Sandy, but right. that song was a very simple song and that we had to kind of show the simplicity of it but kind of do our thing on it as well, you know? The winner of this battle is Tessam. You make it through a tough knockout round, you get the yes. top 20 week and you cover Many Rivers to Cross, oh. a Sir Jimmy Cliff song. Did you have mixed feelings? Mm -hmm. First of all, I didn't want it to seem so cliche. Mm -hmm. While it's a, a, an anthem and very much a reggae anthem, I wasn't sure how many other people know about right, many rivers to cross and that's not discounting the the you know the legendary song that it is it's just a different generation yeah. i was looking for inspiration so i was looking up all these different versions of the song like annie lennox and people like that and i came across a, a concert with jimmy that i was actually backing him on and i just <laughs> thought to myself oh my god if someone told that girl that she'd be doing this now she probably would have laughed you know <laughs> <laughs> Top 10 week, you covered the Gladys Knight song. Oh if God, I were your that woman. was another one. <laughs> and I, I was wondering, I was like, I thought Tessanne was more of a rocker chick. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll call you back more. I went into that trade, I was like, Adam, I don't know about this. <laughs> and we went through songs, and he's like, trust me. He's like, Tess, do you trust me? I was like, I do, but I don't know about this song. <laughs> How did he convince you? He said, you know, in this, if, you know, does it make sense as an artist? No. Does it make sense as someone who's going to showcase their vocals and create a moment? Yes. Like, I wouldn't tell you to go and do this if you were doing an album. <laughs> okay. But on this particular show, he's like, you have to remember, a great song is a great song, regardless of the, the time period, the era, or whatever. A great song is a great song, and that is true. That also was the week that I think was one of my favorite uh, Results Night performances when you duetted with Caroline on oh, Royals. I love that song. <laughs> I love that moment. Yeah. And I love singing with Caroline. She's like my little sis, you know? Everyone who knows us knows. How much time did you have to pull that one? Probably not, not much, not right? Not a lot. <laughs> I had to, I, I'm not even going to lie, I had to lean on the prompter. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Krista, hey, the diamonds on your tower kept messing it up. I kept saying, what was I saying, tigers or so? I can't remember. But it was a mess, and I was just like, oh, God, please don't let me mess this up. Don't let me fall off the table. Krista, <laughs> hey, the diamonds on your tower, please, jet planes, islands, tigers on a cold issue, we don't care. I always say it's harder for women on reality singing competitions just because of some of the heels that you guys... They're pretty vicious. What? But they, that's why God made dress rehearsals <laughs> and shoe grips. <laughs> you followed up with Underneath It All. We went into rehearsal with a different song. What did you go in with? Hey, slow it down. What do you want from me? Which is an amazing song. And I love Adam Lambert, but something wasn't right. And Adam... After the rehearsal, he was like, hmm, cut the camera. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, what's going to happen now, Jesus? And he was like, this is not the right song. I can't send her out with that song. Wow. And it was weird because right before that, it was a bit of an epiphany where I was talking to Aj, one of the producers, about song choices. And I was like, what about this song? Because it kind of showcases a reggae vibe and whatever. And then immediately I was like, what about underneath it all? And he goes, oh. <gasps> You are my real prince, shot me like the heat to my fire. You were always burning in the 
And you kind of kept that reggae vibe going by going into Redemption yes. Song, which is a huge... I was very worried about that one too. Were you? Yeah, because that's like our, one of our anthems and you don't want to... You, you tread carefully when you get songs like that. Redemption Songs Redemption Songs I wanted to do it justice and not just for me, but, you know, for my people and to kind of have that moment and I'm glad he allowed me to do that and I'm glad he chose that song. And you survived the offbeat. You were surrounded, it was like zombie hands, but they, they none of them were in time. I was like, people like you don't hear sway. The clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for in your monitors. <laughs> Is it distracting when they start doing that or do no, you just take it up? I like it. I like it because it adds to the moment. These songs of freedom. You get to semifinals week, you have one song, oh. and you picked Bridge Over Troubled Water. How much? How Adam picked it. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pick it. <laughs> Honestly, I remember we were in his kitchen because he had just finished, we, we'd finished filming the section where he made his eggs, and we had breakfast at his Did house. he actually make the eggs? He did. He did. Oh. He did. It's very good. Good <laughs> eggs, Adam. The eggs are the bomb. He goes, Tazan. Tazan. <laughs> and that's what he calls me. I have a song for you. And I was like, oh, what is it? Because I had bright ideas of my own. <laughs> and he was like, Bridge Over Troubled Water. I was like, Bridge Over Troubled Water? And he was like, yeah, Bridge Over Troubled Water. I was like, but it's so slow. Like, we did the slow songs last week. Like, let's do something upbeat and fun. Let's do some heart, you know? you know. And he was like, nope, that's the song. And he had this look in his eye that was just unwavering. Like, I knew there was no getting through that. I knew that that was a song we we're going to do, and I'm so glad. Out of curiosity, what brilliant ideas were you cooking up that week? You know that um, heart song, let me go crazy on you. I love that song. I was like, oh, I was so convinced. <laughs> I was confident and everything. I was like, and James Wooper was backing me. I had back it <laughs> if. And I was like, heart crazy. I was like, nah. I have the song for you. I was like, <laughs> just shoot me down. <laughs> you are a rocker chick at heart, correct? I am. Yeah. I am. I'm very much a, a rocker at heart. I'm a soul, I'm a soul blues girl as well. And I mean, one of my absolute idols is Tina Turner. You know, and I love Pink. I love people like that. I love Skunk and Nancy and System of a Down and Papa Roach. Is that gonna definitely be part of your Probably. first record? <laughs> Need a little more of that. So we get to sing together, which is pretty awesome. I know. I can't wait. So your last week on the show, you did two things that, like, as somebody who covers reality singing competitions for a living, it was like, no, you can't reggae-fy the Beatles. And yet... <laughs> I was worried about that, It too. worked. Like, I love, I kind of loved what you guys did. When the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. I think it was Nate or Paul, Nate the drummer or, pa or Paul, the band leader that came up with the idea. And when, when we recorded two versions, just to be sure that Adam would like it, because it's like, we keep saying this word, but it's sacred. Yeah. It is, you know? And I remember thinking, are people gonna be upset that we did that? Are they gonna think we were disrespectful? But in a funny way, it kind of lends itself to reggae because reggae is inspirational at its best. And it's, it's, it's always, it, it always carries a message with it. So it, it kind of lends itself to that in that way. And when we were in the studio and Adam heard, he was like, oh, we love it. I was like, you sure? It's okay, because he's like the biggest Beatles fan. Yeah. So if he was okay with it, I thought, okay. Your other crazy thing that you did that week was cover I Have Nothing, which has been done. Yours was the fifth version in five seasons on The Voice. It's oh been done God. eight times on Idol. And I'm always like, I have nothing. You can't do that. You started singing it, and I was like, oh, okay, you can do that. Oh. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. That song was probably our hardest choice because he knew right away that he wanted that song. And I came in, I was like, yeah, but Adam, like, it's Whitney. Like, that's the kiss of death, you yeah. know what I mean? And we kept going around circles with other songs and great songs, you know, but it kept coming back to that one because it had everything that we were looking for, the drama, the build, the soft parts, because they're just as important. Mm -hmm. if I don't have you. He said, Tess, the only way we're gonna solve this is if we go in and see how it feels. And if it doesn't feel right, then we'll be here till all hours, <laughs> trying to find the perfect song. and. We did it, and it felt right. You had all the drama, the, the curtain. Yes, they used a, a sniffer 
Is that what they call it? It's like this big old vacuum that they, they put up into the sky and it sucks the carton up. And I was thinking, what is that? <laughs> and please don't let it drop on my head. <laughs> Tessie Chin! Congratulations from Team Winner! So you get to the finale, you have your debut single, but oh, why don't you sing it after like the most emotional <laughs> moment of your life? What a debut, eh? <laughs> How hard is that? Oh, that moment was just, I can't put it into words, like all the emotions that, that course through you. You know, you can't quite just, if, you can't do it justice with words. And um, I remember trying to sing the song, I remember trying not to get confetti in my mouth. <laughs> <Did you laughs> it was really? a lot of confetti and I did get a piece in my mouth. And I was like, please don't inhale it and choke. Not the right time to choke. When did you first hear it? Maybe like four days or so, because we had to record it. Each and every single one of us, all three of us had to record our version wow. of the song. So it's, it was hard to kind of get attached to it emotionally because you kind of feel like, I don't know if this is mine, you know? Right, right. And I'm very much an emotional being. I have to, I want to own something when I sing it. <laughs> right. So I tried my best. I'm Haley Steinfeld and you're watching ENTV. Hi, my name is Kieran and Shipka and you're watching ENTV. Aubrey Plaza, ENTV. I just touched it with my mouth, sorry. <laughs>